Well, you know, the other just the other day we were talking about uh, depth in the pitching rotation, especially at AAA, and here's a good good evidence of what we have down there. Eflin comes out of out of AAA and uh, pitches uh, outstanding, um, so that that's uh, that's a bonus for us. Um, he deserved to win that game. Uh, I, I have to say that Fulton Evitz pitched a real good game himself. He kept us at bay. Didn't get a lot going until we, you know, late in the game in the seventh inning. String some singles together, together to tie it up. And uh, oddly enough, Franco led that inning off with a line drive that NCRT made a, a nice play on. Uh, what can you say about the back-to-back-to-back home runs? Uh, you know, I told Cesar when he went up to the plate, I said, just make sure you hit the ball up the middle with a man on second, work to the right side, get, try to get a base hit, and um, at the same time move the runner. And uh, he did. He moved the runner. Altair, nice. He continues to swing the bat very well. And uh, Oduble, I think, out of frustration, really focused as hard as he could. Didn't, didn't uh, basically didn't give that bat away, even though we had a, a lead and hit, hit that home run. So, uh, other than that, uh, Joely Rodriguez has really stepped up and done a great job for us. Uh, we originally considered him as a more of a long guy. But he's, he's starting to prove to me that he can get big outs for us late in the game against certain hitters. And he, and he got a couple of big outs with Enciarte and Phillips. Uh, Neris came in. Um, you know, I, he, I wish he didn't walk the first hitter, which sets up a lot of, a lot of things like that that happened. But uh, nevertheless, he, he got out of it and uh, did the job. Where do you think this power surge from Cesar has come from? I think he's, you know, he's uh, eliminated he had an uppercut swing. He, he was underneath the ball. He worked underneath the ball, which made him a low ball hitter. And I think the fact that uh, we convinced him to, to level out his swing and stay on top of the ball, work above the ball, and work your way down through the strike zone, I think has enabled him not only to uh, give him more power, but also hit more line drives and use the whole field. So a lot of it has to do with the swing path, and I think he's got more of a level swing path. Was it vital for him? You know, it's good to be a 300 hitter, but when you have that gap power or, or extra base power, to, to, to show that to be a, a big league player, which is not just be a slap guy. I mean, you didn't want him to be a slap guy when you bench him last year. You just wanted him to be. Well, of course, you know, uh, you know what, Bob, um, along those lines, he's a non-base guy. He's a good leadoff hitter. But now I'm starting to think of him as a, as a cleanup hitter, provide some power for us. <laughs> no, it is nice, you know. Um, uh, it's good to see he's not trying to hit home runs. He's trying to hit line drives. And when you work above the ball and level your swing out and you hit the bottom half of the ball, the ball's going to go up uh, with a line drive swing. So he's been doing that. And be- because of it, he's hitting more gaps and hitting for more power. He did make a concerted effort, too, though, to come in stronger this spring. Well, did you notice that? Yeah, he, he worked hard. And, and you know, we told him when, when he left last year what he needed to do to improve. And he's done everything we've asked him. And he looks much stronger. He's just playing full of confidence. Gets uh, two walks amid a, a, a lineup that's just striking out like crazy. Then he he gets a hit in that eighth inning that you know that wakes at least wakes the crowd up. I don't know about your team, but uh, can you? I mean, well, Nava is really valuable to us bec- for those reasons. You know, he's not he's a part time player that gives you good at bats, quality at bats, uh, in a part time role, and he, he works the count. Uh, obviously, the first game of the season, he, he showed us some power. Uh, he's got gap power and occasional home run power from both sides of the plate, and he just gives you good quality at bats and doesn't get himself out. Do you believe that has any? Uh, you know, sometimes we make too much of that. That younger players see that, can learn from that, can get anything from that. Well, we all talk. You know, they all talk as hitters amongst themselves and, and uh, remind each other what they need to do and what they, you know, what their weaknesses are and how to go about taking at bats. And I think watching guy, a guy like that uh, is. You can't help but notice. And if it were me, and I was more of a free swinger, I'd go up to him and I'd ask him, "How do I, how do I tone it down a little bit?" Uh, I'm, he's a good defender too. I, I, I'm, I'm happy with his defense. Cesar, say, so you said that Cesar hit the ball up the middle and tried to move a runner. He gets the home run. Did he say anything to you coming back into the dugout or anything like that? No, I kind of jumped on when I told you hit the ball up the middle, and uh, he. <laughs> no. And no, basically, you know, a guy like that, uh, you know, a deep fly ball to center field will move the runner over to third base. So don't forfeit an opportunity to drive a ball in a gap just to move a runner over. Try to drive the ball, get a hit at, at the same time, uh, you know, move the runner. 
know Altair's playing because Howie's hurt, but if if you have those three guys at the top of the lineup going, what do you like about <coughs> that look and kind of what they could possibly do down the road? Well, I like uh, I like all three right there. I like you know I like. Uh, um, Howie Kendrick also. I mean, I'm anxious for him to get back, and then we'll go from there. We've got some good things going. Uh, you know, we've got Altier. We've got a good bench. Altier, Nava, uh, Blanco. Uh, we've got uh, Knapp, who's doing a good job behind the plate. We're, we're in pretty good shape that way, and then we'll probably end up at some point adding another player. Eflin's really settled in since that first inning in New York in his first start. What do you, uh, do you attribute that? Well, he's been here before. I remember his first outing in, against Toronto last year. He was all over the place, up in the zone, couldn't throw a quality strike. Uh, and then immediately thereafter, he just became a good pitcher. And uh, in the culmination of his uh, year last year was that game against Pittsburgh where he was just unhittable. And tonight was similar to that. Uh, when he's got that bowling ball sinker working, it's hard for a hitter to not to have to worry about the inside part of the plate, which opens up the, the outer, outer half. Talk last night about how your team was tough, you know, especially you know, a game like last night where you had to rally again. Do you think you're better off to the way you grind games out? You know, team, yeah, you go through the lineup twice and you struggle, and then you finally kind of find the answers. There. Well, it's always a it's always a bonus when you have a team like that. You know, they, like I said, these guys pull for each other. They they. Uh, because we have a good bench, we have some interchangeable players who can step in and, and uh, do a good job. Stassi came through with a big hit again uh, when he had two strikes on him. Um, these guys, you know, they're fighters, and it's good to see. Is this nine and nine? You were nine and nine at this point last year. Do, does this nine and nine feel different to you? It does feel different. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, <laughs> who would have thought Cesar would hit four home runs the whole year? You know, but uh, there's a lot of things, good things going on, and. Uh, We'll just go from here and see what happens. Once again, uh, the big thing for me is that uh, inventory at AAA. When we need a pitcher, we've got a guy like Eflin coming up. You know, we've got Lively and uh, uh, so on, and Thompson and, and uh, Pavetta. And these guys are pretty good pitchers, so we're in good shape that way. When Eflin's going well like he was today, he tends not to miss a lot of bats, but he gets a lot of weak contact. Uh, what about his approach? It's because his sinker has such good movement to it. You know, they, they don't, they can't, it's hard to square up a good sinker with the movement he's got on it. And he throws some good secondary pitches too.